This is the Move the World podcast. Interviews with people dedicated to making the world a better place. With your host, George Siegel. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Move the World podcast, where we feature people who are doing something in their lives or in their job to help move the world. Now, millions of people in this country are vegans. That means no animal products in the food. So how would that translate to no animal products in the sporting world? My guest today is Troy Aiken of Eco Sports, a high quality sporting goods store that is eliminating leather from sports and replacing it with sustainable, long lasting, biodegradable, vegan material. Troy, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, now tell us, this is a, a, a big undertaking by you. So in your big picture, what does Troy Aiken and his business do to move the world? <laughs> uh, well, we want to give back to, to planet Earth first and foremost by making a product that uh, is eco-friendly, that's biodegradable, that's recyclable. Uh, 10% of our profits go towards giving back to charities and nonprofits. So that's another way we want to give back. And also we want to give back to animal welfare by not using leather. The leather industry is a billion dollar industry. You know, they think maybe you get meat and leather out of it. That's not always the case. How you get this leather isn't even necessarily from cows. Sometimes it's from cats and dogs. China has no rules and regulations over there. So there's just multiple different ways that we want to give back to earth, animals, humans, society, all the above. What are the types of, of sporting goods equipment that you're going to be manufacturing? So right now we're starting with basketball, soccer balls, and volleyballs. Uh, we're also in production footballs, but eventually we want to get into baseball gloves, boxing gloves, uh, even football, soccer cleats, uh, softball cleats, uh, softball gloves. There's just, you kind of, once you go down this rabbit hole, you realize how many sports use uh, leather and then even tennis. Where, so I played college tennis and had no idea until I went down this rabbit hole that tennis balls use sheepskin, which is technically another animal byproduct as well. Um, so eventually we'll try and get into all sports, but uh, right now we're focusing on basketball, soccer, and volleyballs. Now you hear so much talk about people saying, we got to go green, we got to conserve, we got to do all these things. So what kind of response are you getting when people hear that uh, you're turning the sporting world into something that is green? Yeah, for the, I mean, I'm based in Los Angeles and San Francisco are kind of my two hometowns. So I think I have a little bit of bias here that we're on a more progressive greener side than some of the country. Okay. Um, I will say like uh, having an SEO background and working with a bunch of companies that 90% of their sales come from California, New York and kind of Florida and Texas, where I feel like will be relatively well received. Um, and so for the most part, it's been pretty good. And I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about this later, but as long as the product is co like a high quality product that competes with the other leather and top name brands, then I don't see why they wouldn't go with an eco-friendly option that also will give back to communities. Now, a lot of times in the food world, when you're eating something vegan, you know the difference. I mean, unless you're committed to being a vegan and you get used to that, it can be a real adjustment. So if I'm used to a leather basketball or a leather volleyball, and all of a sudden I've got this eco-friendly um, non-leather ball, what am I going to notice? Yeah, I don't think it, there's too much of a difference. Um, the, one, the one thing, our balls are water resistant, so kind of sweat resistant, but uh, the leather kind of absorbs sweat where this kind of is a little more resistant sweat. So with that said, I mean, we've tested it a bunch of times. We've even just lifted our shirt up sweaty and just rubbed the ball on it. And then, you know, a couple of seconds later, it's gone. Um, whereas like a leather basketball kind of absorbs that sweat instead of that, if that makes sense. Um, but other than that, it's still like, it has a soft tacky feel to it. Um, it's, it's sticky. Uh, I, don't, I don't notice too much of a difference, which is why I thought that I could start a company based on it. How does it hold up in terms of like, if you take a leather ball and, and you're playing with it on your driveway, uh, it gets pretty beat up, you know, if you don't have that special uh, driveway ball. So how does yours hold out, out, hold up outdoors as opposed to indoors as well? It, it's good. So the material that we use is, is called like a TPU material, a thermoplastic polyurethane material. So it's like kind of a, of, of like a hybrid between a plastic and a rubber. 
Um, so therefore it's, it's a super durable material. So it would do well outside. Um, but due to like the kind of the way it's made, a it's eco-friendly and recyclable and biodegradable. Um, but it's also like less toxic for the workers to make, but it still has that plastic and rubbery feel to, or like texture that allows it to be durable and handle. It's like, it's scuff free, it's water resistant. So now, how do you grow a business like this, especially in a country that's so divided on so many things? It's like, well, some people say, let's go green. Other people say, no, come on, that's ridiculous. You know, there's people pushing back that, that think the old way is fine and aren't necessarily open-minded to it. So from a marketing perspective, how do you tackle that kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, there are definitely a lot of people that, that don't believe in climate change and you have the right to believe in that. But uh, let's just say that 3% of the world is, or 3% of, United, I think it's like 3 to 5% of the United States is vegan. So hopefully we'll be able to capture a lot of that market. And then we're not necessarily going after uh, vegans only. We're going after athletes that like care about the environment, that care about their health, that care about, you know, their future, their kids. And, and so definitely we're hoping that a lot of moms and parents that want a more eco-friendly option for their kids will be interested in this product. So, and, and we don't need to become Nike that takes 40% of the market share. We just want to be able to make a difference. And, you know, 1% of the market is still a hundred thousand basketballs. And that hopefully does a lot of good saving some cows from being shed from, you know, having a biodegradable material. So, uh, and I, I think that as we succeed and start to take market share, I'm hoping that a Nike and Adidas and those guys start to take notice and start to make more eco-friendly options on their end, which may be bad for us because they could just dominate that kind of market. But it's, it's more than just trying to sell a basketball. Yeah, that's where I think your message is going to be so important because I think there's a lot of people that are sick of people like Nike um, and, and, their, and their message at times. And so having an alternative with a good message, I think could be, uh, could, could be great. Now, one of the things you and I were discussing beforehand, uh, right now you're not manufacturing these or won't be making them here in the United States. So how does that, but, but that's not for lack of trying. What, 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 is, what are you running into with that? Because that's kind of disappointing to hear that there aren't better options in this country. Yeah, totally. And I think, I mean, it goes back to how that there are more jobs available than there are unemployed people, but just the people aren't willing to work the low end $10 an hour kind of jobs where to, that China does, has all those options. And so I searched, that was one of my, well, one of my biggest factors was just finding a material that worked for me. Um, Cause we, we want to improve as well too. Like there, there's still like, you could use a mushroom leather or a cactus leather, like those types of things, which would be like organic material, which would be pretty awesome to be able to use on a basketball or football. Um, but I searched high and low for a ball manufacturer in the United States. I really wanted to make it in the United States and shipping and the supply chain is, is so backed up and expensive right now that I could have seen it being just as cost friendly to, to make it in the United States. Um, but I, I couldn't find anywhere, even like the Wilsons or the Spaldings or all those people that are based in Nevada or Chicago or wherever they are, their balls are still made in China. Even those massive manufacturers don't have, they're not making any balls, any of their volleyballs, basketballs, footballs, gloves, like none of it is made in the United States. Wow. That's, that's frustrating to mm -hmm. hear because you would think that somebody would want to capture that. I mean, we're seeing that with the chips that are in uh, electronics with all the delays because all that stuff is manufactured overseas right. as well. So hopefully somebody hears that and says, wow, let's really, cause I think that could be a huge uh, rallying cry for your business. Yeah, it'd be great. So if somebody has a ball manufacturer in the United States, please, please shoot me an email. Now I was on your website today. Cause I was curious about the basketballs mm -hmm. and my daughter plays basketball and I wanted to get one. And, and, Wow, so I'm like 100 years older than you. I didn't know there were all these different sizes of basketballs. There's three different sizes. So how does somebody, uh, I know you list why you would have each one, but if you're mm -hmm. buying a basketball just for your kids to grow with, would you get the big one? What, which one would you get? Uh, depending on the age, but if I, were, if I were just starting basketball and probably under 10 years old, like if it's for my five-year-old son, I'd probably buy the 27.5 inch uh circumference i think or radius one of those math things um 
And I would start with one of those for a young kid. And then you move into 28.5, which uh, a woman's basketball will stay with forever. So they'll kind of from middle school on to professional, a woman's basketball will be 28.5 inches. And then when I would, um, a boy or guys, middle school will use 28.5 inch. So kind of from like that 12, 13. And then when they get to high school, they'll use the 29.5, which is the pro size as well too. Um, uh, it seems, and it seems like there's so many green events or things that you could get this stuff out to that you could really showcase. Do you have a lot of plans for getting this out and about and uh, letting people get their hands on it to see that this is just as good as, as the regular stuff, the leather stuff? Yeah, definitely. COVID has really uh, put a damper on a lot of events, so it's a little, a little more difficult. But definitely we want to we want to kind of get into like the AAU circuit of AAU basketball, AAU soccer, traveling, the, you know, the traveling high school, younger generation is is a definitely a, a target audience of us, but definitely to show them that there are greener options available. Um, and then, yeah, being in L.A., there's just green events all the time. And so we'd love to start getting into kind of those expos and those kind of types of things. But it's just a, it's just a weird time. Yeah, it sure is. What's the website for people to check out? Uh, it's ecosports.com. It's just E-C-O. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's all pre-orders right now as our manufacturer is just finishing up. I've gotten, uh, I've gotten some samples of the, of the finished product that he shipped for me to be able to take pictures and get listing images. And I'm super happy with everything. I think the product is is high quality. It looks good. It looks clean. We've tried to stick to kind of a green and blue theme, uh, at least for the soccer balls and volleyballs. Um, basketball, you just stick with kind of the brown and orange. Uh, but hopefully, once we start growing and getting different colors for basketballs, we'll be able to, you know, make it make an earth basketball. Yeah. No, there's no question that would be great. And and what uh, what's the time frame for when you think the stuff's going to start showing up so people can get them in their hands? Yeah, so they, they say shipping is 30 to 45 days, but uh, the world is on fire literally and figuratively. Uh, yeah. So so hopefully, I'm hoping to have them done within a week or two. Uh, so that puts us kind of towards the end of September. 30 days would be November. So maybe November 15th is when I'm hoping that uh, I'll have product that if you pre-order that I could ship out then. And Well, it's such a good message. I like the fact you want to give 10% back. Of, of the profits to, to help, uh, to help charities or help other people. So what do you suggest to people that are sitting out there that ha might have an idea like you did and they say, yeah, so it's, it's a big undertaking, but they really want to try to do something to move the world. What would you tell them? Yeah, it, it is a big undertaking that, but that's, you don't make big moves without moving bigly. Uh, no, I, it's just that you got to start somewhere. And if, if it's starting small and, and working with a, a local charity nearby, or, you know, I started donating time uh, for a charity called Acing Autism, which is playing tennis with autistic kids. And it's great to help out those kids, but it's also so rewarding for yourself that you like, this is, it's so addicting. That's like, how do I help more? How do I help more? Um, and so then about two years ago, I started selling tennis equipment online at just about the same time that I started going plant-based and vegan. And then the more I got into the vegan world and the vegan lifestyle, because the plant-based is the diet and then vegan is kind of the lifestyle. But did I say plant-based is the diet and veganism the lifestyle? No, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I started realizing all these products are like a golf glove is, is leather was kind of the first thing that one of my friends called me out for was using a leather golf glove. And I just didn't even think about it. And so I thought if I could combine my passion of sports and entrepreneurship and be able to give back, I, I mean, at least 10%, I want to just do, I want, I'm starting with 10% so that I can become a profitable, profitable business and continue to grow, but would love to start giving back way more and start giving back in time as well, too. Are you a vegan in the, in the real eating world as well, or is that tough to do? Yeah, yeah. So I'm all, I'm just about two years uh, into full time vegan, plant based. Um, no meat, no dairy, no eggs, uh, and love it. So there's some amazing restaurants in LA for that too. Yeah, being in LA definitely has made it easier. Opposed to when I go travel, it's a little tougher. But you know, there's always a Chipotle somewhere or Subway that you can get a veggie sandwich or veggie burrito. Yeah. Awesome. Well, well, listen, man. I I wish you success with this. It's a it's a big undertaking. Um, 
But you know, like I say, I'm going to go on there and buy a basketball and I, I hope people check it out because I, I like what you're doing with this thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, w- I would love that so much. Which, uh, which size are you looking into? Well, because I have an 11-year-old daughter, I think maybe the mid-range one, right? The, the I 28.5? It, I think that's a good, a good option. Yes. Yeah. So uh, anyway, thanks for coming on and uh, best of luck with the business. Yeah, thank you so much. And thanks for letting people that are trying to move the world show other people that they're moving the world. Is that how you're moving the world? Well, you know, that's one of the goals with Move the World Films. We made a film about building houses that survive disasters, major weather disasters. We focused on um, the fires in Malibu um, a few years ago and the tragic wildfires you guys have out there, hurricanes, tornadoes, and people don't build right. You know, we build crap and then we're surprised when it blows down. So, you know, anything that helps the environment, helps the world is, is a positive thing. Um, So I think you're headed in the right direction. I mean, that's what we hope to accomplish too. So I think we have the same idea. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, I certainly appreciate the time and uh, thanks for buying ball. We'll stay in touch. All right. So that's going to do it for this episode of Move the World. As Troy was talking about, he took a big undertaking and he took a chance and he's doing something and we'll see how his business turns out. And that's something everybody needs to think about is uh, try to do something, step out there and try to do something to move the world. We'll see you next time.